So good evening once again. You are welcome to our class on research methods. And I'm going to do a session on doing literature review. So the last time we met, we talked about selecting a topic. And I told you the factors that influence the choice of a topic. But today what we'll try to do is to go further and try to understand how to review literature so that we can use that to inform the selection of a topic. So that's what we are going to do today. Our session will cover defining literature review, identifying locating literature, and then when you locate the literature, how then do you use it to identify research gaps and select a topic? Um, before I start, I just want to emphasize that what I'm teaching right now has already been taught and placed on the Sakai platform. Um, not just the pre-recorded session, but the online session. I've already put one of the classes on there, the online interaction from Zoom. I've already, I've already put an interaction that we have there on, on Sakai, and I'll show that later when we finish the class. By that time, everybody will be here, so I'll, I can show that. So let's just start with what we want to do today. So defining literature review. Now, you see, before you start any endeavor, it is important to um, try to understand what the predecessors have done so that you could, it can inform your decision in the endeavor you are taking. So similarly, in any academic endeavor like doing research in an academic environment, one thing that we expect you to do is to review existing literature or resources and materials that have been published already concerning the topic that you have in mind so that you can ascertain what has been done and be able to defend and, and determine what you do that will be different from what has been done already. So we define literature review as a synthesis of available resources and materials with a strong relation to the topic in question accompanied by a description and a critical evaluation and comparative analysis of each work. What we'll do today is to focus on the first part of the definition before, before the comma, a synthesis of available resources and materials with a strong relation to the topic in question. Now, what it means is that anytime you are conducting literature review, what is the starting point is the topic you have. So when you have a topic, you then you select your materials and it says available resources and materials. Now, available resources and materials refer to accessibility, meaning that the materials and resources that you use should first of all be in relation to the topic that you want to research on. And secondly, they should be available, accessible to others so that they can verify that this information has the information as you are claiming that it has that information. So, the reason why you're supposed to, you're supposed to select accessible materials and resources which have a strong relation to the topic is because it is not advisable to say that you want to do a research on stakeholder communication and you spend all your time reading on causing financial loss to the state or financial management. It doesn't help. So anytime you are carrying out a literature review, you are going to review the literature. So you have to find the literature by searching for them. Your search will be guided by the topic you have. And the topic should be of the interest of interest to you. So the topic that you want to research on, even if you are now having as a uh, preliminary topic, it's, it's, not, it's, not, it's not wrong. It's, you can start, Zan, it's not an error. You can start from there and then refine the topic as you go on. So, the word synthesis in the definition also means that when you find these resources, you're supposed to bring two or more of them together to do your write-up, which we'll discuss later. A synthesis means that a synthesis means that you're bringing two or more things together. It means that you cannot just dwell on one resource to do your whole long essay or to do an academic work. You need to use more than one resource, which also helps you to do verification and checking for accuracy and comparing and evaluating and critiquing the work. So, 
a synthesis of available resources and material with a strong relation with the topic in question. Please, if you have a question, you could actually raise your hand in the chat room and I will mute you. Then I could hear your question, then we can, I can continue. Or you can type it in the chat room and then I could unmute you. When I say raise your hand, use the icons there to raise your hand, not physically raise your hand. Okay, so now we have a definition of literature review. So let's go on to know why we do the review. We do the review because in, in carrying out any endeavor and you have to argue, you need to have some substance to argue. So the literature review gains, it helps you to develop the knowledge that becomes the substance or the theoretical standard that you can use to do your argument. So most of you watch this Saturday program in Ghana called News File or News Review where they review the events of the week, political discourse, economic discourse, social discourse. One of the gentlemen who usually participates in this, um, the Honorable um, one of the things he does is that any, most of the time when he's coming to the studio for, his, for this particular panelist discussion, he carries around along, he brings along my, um, old newspapers and, and publications sometimes spanning up to the 70s to support the arguments that he's going to put across to substantiate his particular positions. So anytime he says something, they say that I have the, I have the material here, you can look at it. And that's what I'm trying to emphasize here about literature review. Literature review, when you conduct it, it gives you the knowledge that becomes your very basis of your argument. It helps you to also, because you are reviewing literature from your discipline, it also demonstrates, helps you to demonstrate how you can be able to contribute new knowledge to the discipline that you belong to. Because you, are, you will be able to identify what has not been done and then point out what needs to be done. Even in a political discourse, when one, um, and when one politician is um, debating with another politician, they point, a gap, they point to the gaps that the other person couldn't address in his jurisdiction or during his time of office, and that he wants to address them and do more. So that is the same thing that we are doing in a literature review. You are beginning a new research, so we expect you to actually review the existing literature concerning the topic you have selected. So if you, are want, you want to do a research on unemployment, read, read, read the literature on unemployment. Read those where, which have been published in developing countries. Read those which have been published in developed countries to, develop, to generate a picture or an understanding of what has been done and what has not been done. Okay. Now, when you do the review, because you are able to identify gaps, you will be able to determine what your work needs to be done so that you can be able to improve the field of research. You can also be able to tell what has not yet been done. So most of the time, research papers point out the gaps that future researchers should do. And we will come across some today. I'll, I'll demonstrate that to you. And because you are able to find out the gaps that future research should do, you can make a choice of what you want to do. And when you make a choice of what you want to do, then you can actually say that what I'm trying to do in this research area is unique or original because existing research by Kwame Mena and, and this, and by um, Abo and that, and by, um, let's say, Sorensen and, and let's say, Quada have pointed out that there is a need for more research in A and B. So because there is a gap in A and B, I am attempting to address that gap by carrying out a research in Ghana on this particular topic. Then it means that you have been able to point out that there is not, um, arguably, there is no work that has done, been done in that area, and you are the one who may be doing the same, the first time contributing knowledge in that area or even give it a different perspective. Maybe it's one, some work has been done in the area, but it was published in South Africa or Kenya, or even sometimes Hong Kong, or even Taiwan, or Malaysia. You want to do a similar work, but you want to look at it in Ghana. Why is Ghana unique? Then you explain yourself. And then you, why you are chasing Ghana and why Ghana can, you can use this research in this particular country to generate new knowledge. Okay. Now, for practical considerations, when you do your reading, 
you are able to use the literature review to demonstrate to your supervisor or whoever will be reading the work that you have read extensively. What do I mean by that? So one of the key authors who have been writing on SME financing in Ghana and in the, finance, in the business school finance department is Professor Abo. And he has written on SME financing and SME small businesses for quite a long time. So if you say you are doing work on SME financing in Ghana, and per chance we look through your whole work and we don't see even one work from him, then you really have to justify why you use all the other ones without mentioning any work from him. Another one is if you are even looking at the definition of the concept SME, there's a work that was done um, far behind, um, far in, in the past on um, SME definition in Ghana. You may come across it and you may end up using it to your work. So when you take your work to your supervisor, he usually looks at the references and check. Has this student even seen the works I, I the supervisor, have even done? Or other authors in the business school has even carried, carried out so that they reflect in your work. So when I read your literature, you read your work, I try to check whether you have demonstrated that you have read it extensively, cover the key authors that are published in that area in Ghana and in other de developing regions of the world or even other developed countries, depending on the topic you have selected. So literature review matters a lot. And most often, students don't do, know how to do it very well. So I'm going to take my time and explain it to you over three sessions. I think we'll be doing about three different sessions of literature review. Because of the online platform, and we have got enough time to the end of May, I'm going to do my best to make sure that you are equipped with the skills to be able to carry out research on your own. Okay. So by you asking questions based on the review, you can narrow your research focus. Because maybe initially, you wanted to do something on unemployment, and you want to read. And you realize that there's not much research on female unemployment, or female unemployment in the agriculture industry or even female unemployment in the uh, in, in microfinance industry or even in the extractive industry. So it gives you an indication that you could narrow your work and focus on female unemployment in the extractive industry. So by doing a good review, it will help you narrow your research focus and rather start with a very broad theme, a very broad theme. Then you may even ask questions that may occur to you because now you are reading the literature, you have gotten to identify what has been done and what has not been done. So the questions that you didn't even think about, you can ask. And then it becomes the knowledge base for your arguments as you write out your work. So good. I'm trying to take my time so that I can explain and then you can follow gradually. So if you don't have any question here, I'm gonna progress on how do you even begin the review so that you can understand what we mean by literature review. Okay. So identifying the literature. There are several stages in identifying the literature, but the, the dominant ones which matter are six. First of all, the definition told us that literature review is a synthesis of available resources and materials which have a strong relation with the topic in question. It means that anybody who is carrying out a literature review should have a topic that he is seeking to question or search in or do the work on, so the topic. Now you can start with a preliminary topic and later come back and refine it. I mentioned that earlier. Then he needs to select literature and, and ensure that those literature he has selected are relevant to that topic. That's why you have got select and ident identify and locate the literature and then ensure relevance that they are re related to the topic and related to what you are interested in to research. Then you are going to save the, download the, materials onto your computer that's record and retrieve, and then give it intelligent naming system so that you can always remember what is in the PDF document when you come back to your folder. You can remember, oh, if I remember, just look at the file name, you can even tell that this was about this and this is about it, that was published in this year. I'll teach you that. Then you are going to review and summarize and then write. Writing will be done two weeks time. So the next, um, this week and next week, we will try to get to know the literature review and then how to, to select a topic out of that. Okay. So let's try to do now. We know last week we talked about selecting a topic, but now let's try to look at how do you identify the literature. So let's do how do you identify the literature. 
Okay, so there are different sources of literature. Periodicals are usually um, in the industry magazines and that are periodically published, like Economist, Time Magazine. Scholarly journals are the same, but these are published by academic, academics. Then you have got books, which are you are conversant with books, usually contain concepts that have been explained. It can be a textbook that covers the diversity of concepts, or case study book that showcases cases concerning a concept. Dissertations, long essays, are people's work that they have written and submitted to the university already. Government documents, that one are government reports, uh, policy documents and reports, acts from government, um, program documents from government, presented paper by government officials, existing statistics from Ghana Statistical Service, from the U UN, from the WHO, from UNDP, from all these key institutions and research institutions across the world, and industry reports from different industries that you may belong to. Even industries report can be from, any, any, um, from regulatory bodies and then can be from authorities. Um, NCA, for example, the National uh, uh, Commission for um, a Natural Communication Authority is one that in Ghana you can actually refer to their documents. Now, there are plenty of them. So somebody may ask us, so say, where do we start from? Okay. For an academic work, the first thing I would advise is that you want to draw more on scholarly journals. Those are the ones you want to love a lot. So I'm putting more love hearts there. Now, why? Because journals themselves are published out of thorough review. So a journal article is usually published by a publisher who um, uh, commissions a journal to be established. And that journal may be headed by an editorial board. The editorial board has an editor-in-chief. So when you submit a paper to that place, the journal, will, the journal editor will go through the paper and see whether it's relevant to the journal that you have submitted to. Then if it is relevant, he will send it to independent reviewers, mostly about three of them, who you don't know and they don't know you. And they will review the work. After reviewing the work, they will give recommendations to improve the work or reject the work. So that is the scientific community that is assessing the work that you have written. So after they have assessed the work, the general editor will compile the review results and give it to you to improve your paper. Eventually, this may go on, on and on and until the paper is accepted or rejected. So if the paper is accepted, it goes and is published. So general articles usually present contemporary perspectives and arguments and usually with contemporary data or empirical data concerning the phenomenon that you want to study. So if I want female unemployment, if I want the recent information on female unemployment in Africa, and I check databases, general database, I'll get what people are saying concerning female unemployment in Africa or different African countries. And I'll get the up to date. Sometimes some of them are published, some journals publish monthly, some of them publish quarterly, some of them publish twice a year. But whatever it is, you end up getting relevant information. Even as I'm talking to you, some journals have only already released their journal articles for May and even April. So you get most relevant information as of today and perspectives and arguments concerning the topic that you want to research on. So I encourage students that when they are doing their long essay, Scholarly journals should contribute up to about 70% of the articles that are featured in their work or the materials that they use in the work that they are doing. Now, I'm not saying go and count and see you have 70, but the dominant works that will be in your um, long essay will be scholarly journals because of that perspective of giving you relevant information, up to date information. Now, the next thing that become important for people when they are students when they are researching doing their long essay is books. Books like explaining concepts, giving definitions of concepts and giving perspectives on our concepts is good. So you can draw on books too. Then the next one, so books I'll give them two star, two hats or three hats, okay. Then the other ones that are all in the given the same level are these ones, the policy reports, assessment statistics, and then um, periodical. Somebody is saying that we are finished celebrating Valentine's Day and Prof is putting hats 
on all of these things. Don't worry, my heart goes to all of all of you <laughs> in this corona time. Okay, so you have periodicals and you've got government documents, policy reports, existing statistics. All of these are very good information sources and they help to substantiate your, your arguments. So you argue that there's an increase in mob mobile penetration or there's an increase <clears throat> in, the, in, um, in the reports in maybe occurrence of malaria in West Africa. And then somebody actually says who? They say the WHA report 2020 or March 2020 stated that this and this about this number of Africans uh, were reported to have malaria by the as of um, 20 something March 2020. So that information that you have put out there, you need to substantiate it. And the substantiating means that you are bringing evidence from it. If I talk about inflation in a country, if I talk about oil prices going down, if I talk about trends in society and then in industry, I need industry reports to substantiate and to back as evidence that this is where they are taking the argument from. Sometimes when students have worked in a particular field for a long time, they think that they can use what this is given knowledge that they know about the industry as academic information is acceptable. No. Because with academia, whatever you are using, it should come from available resources and material. It should be relatively accessible to others to verify, to check for accuracy, so that we don't think that you are using a biased view or you are not just using one position to be able to support an argument that is not verifiable. Science means that you have to be able to falsify or, or dis disprove what, there should be an opportunity for us to disprove what you are putting across. And the only way we can disprove what you are putting across is to ask know where your evidence is. If you did your research yourself, let us see the methodology if, and, the, and the data. If you didn't do it yourself and somebody did it, point out to the material so that we can find it. Now, let me give you a joke. When I was Manchester doing my PhD, no, I was doing my master's at that time, there was a student that we were giving a lot of assignments, and we had Chinese and Nigerian students in the class, and then Ghanaians and other students from Greece and other countries. So the Chinese students, usually when they do assignments, then they give references as something in Chinese that you have to try and translate before you can locate where the material is. So there was this Nigerian student who I knew, and he told us that, hmm, you have been given an assignment, you want to just do some quotation from Nigeria and give some interesting, something like Abiyo Kota 2000 and something, so that if they ask you, say, oh, it's a material that's in, China, in, in, in Nigeria, and he has access to it, he has seen it before. So he did the assignment and then put it out there that something and something occurred in a particular place and he's using substantiate his argument. So the lecturer came to class and then came to tell the student that you, this material you have put in there, he was a, an uh, English lecturer. And he said that you don't, that, mat that, that the source of that material is flawed, it's an error, it's, it doesn't exist. And the student was trying to um, defend himself. Then the lecturer told him that um, this material you are saying that is there, it doesn't exist. I lived in Nigeria for 10 years. I met my wife in Nigeria. I was working there teaching in Nigeria, in Nigerian schools as a, a volunteer. So what material you are using, it doesn't exist. I know this particular place. And the student was caught. <laughs> so sometimes students try to pass a material that doesn't exist. And they say, oh, this one, we know it exists. It exists. But we advise you that try to use available resources and materials to substantiate your, your arguments. I know there are some materials that may be, um, may be private to the institutions. Nobody will have access to it. Try to stay away from such material unless necessary. So your core argument should be, you should be drawn from materials that are relatively accessible so that we can locate the material. Okay. Yeah, am I laughing? <laughs> okay, so let's continue. Okay, I need to clean my, my hats from there. Mm. I'll put them back. And those of you who are crying, I'm removing it. Okay, good. So, where do we get the materials? In the University of Ghana, you go to the University of Ghana website. This link, I don't know whether it works again, but I'll show you now. They have made it easier for you to get to the material. So, I'll point it out to you as we go on. So, you go to the University of Ghana website and look for BAM Library. I'll demonstrate that. 
And when you go there, you look for what we call general databases. Databases are a collection, collections of journals. So EBSCOhost, for example, is a collection of a lot of American and European journals. And EBSCOhost hosts things like the Trade Magazine, Economist, Harvard Business Review, and so many of them. Then you have Emerald. Emerald is also emeraldinsight.com. It's a very good platform that has quite a number of information for you to draw from. And then you have got JSTOR, Palgrave. Palgrave is a publisher, Sage is a publisher, Emerald is also a publisher. Science Direct is a very, is from Elsevier, who is the publisher. It's a good database for scientific information. So some of the things that if you look for corruption from, a concept like corruption in Emerald, you get the management perspective, the social perspective. But if you look at it from, try to search for it from Science Direct, you end up getting more of this, like maybe technology perspective, maybe a science perspective. We'll do these kind of examples as we go on. Then we have got Wiley and I've got Taylor and Francis. Most of these ones, you need a password to be able to access their content. But in the, um, so you usually register it, register for it through the university, which I'll show you. Then you also have others which are relatively free, relatively free. So like general, African Journals Online is published by the, it's, a, it's sponsored by the Ford Foundation and it's in South Africa. They host all the, a, a large number of journals from African universities. Then directory of open access journals tries to host journals which are usually free and open and the content is free for people to access. Then you have got Google Scholar, which is what is one of the very good platforms. It searches all databases and points out, points and sometimes to point you to some of the materials that are free and sometimes some of them which are also behind and pay, pay, payment gateways. And then you have got topics in development, which is from the World Bank and the World Bank databases. And, and UN databases. Those ones are very good for statistics. Okay, so let's see. Well, so to get off-campus access, you go to the University of Ghana website. Uh, let me do a new share. So this is the University, this is the University of Ghana. Um, give me a second. This is the University of Ghana website. It will bring you here. And the library, you choose off-campus access to register. Okay, then you register here. The registration is just your ID. Your ID plus your date of birth in this particular format. And then you enter a password and you register. So I advise you to try to do that later. I advise you to try to do that later. Okay, now, so you register for off-campus access and then you can log in. When you log in, you're able to log in and the login goes on, goes through. Um, I don't have access. My access doesn't work anymore. Um, I've not gone to renew it. So my access doesn't work anymore. You say my student ID has expired. So I'll try and get it renewed later. <laughs> my access doesn't work anymore. Okay. So that's what I'll, I'm just right. So when you log on, it will just take you straight to a, um, a page for you to be able to browse the databases. But despite that, we can still get information from BAM Library. So let's try that. Okay. So let's say that you go to University of Ghana website and you choose and you want to get the content. So you can go to online catalog and the library online catalog. And that will give you this page. And on the online catalog, you can choose databases by subject. Okay. And databases by subject, you have a lot of the accounting. So those of you who are in accounting, you can choose accounting. And those of you who are in um, health, there are education, economics, um, gender studies, um, information studies, marketing and entrepreneurship department. Um, operations and management information system. We reach RM. Um, somebody say progress, no public admin. Interesting. But I think I've got social work, social policy. And then I think you may, you may have political science. I don't know whether I have political science. You don't have political science. Okay. Uh, there's political science here. So sometimes your topic may be embedded, your subject area may be better than any of them. But let me explain a trick to you. The business school, we always, all of us use almost the same databases. 
So if I click on accounting, I'll get almost the same thing that I'll get when I click on marketing. In fact, all the dominant ones are here. You see Emerald is here, F schools is here, uh, academic search complete is here, which is also part of S Coast. Um, Sage is here, Taylor and Francis is here, Wiley is here. So the ones I mentioned, they're all here. So this is what I would advise you to focus more on. Maybe just click on account and just get the, the list to use. So let's start with Emerald. So I start, I open the Emerald page. Now, if you log on to the university, um, access it will open and show University of Ghana at the top right corner here. So you see University of Ghana here. But because I'm logging on through my own internet, it doesn't have the University of Ghana internet and I don't have the login. So what's important is that you go to the Emerald Insight and then you start. Okay, so let's somebody may say, Oh, say this was a little bit too fast. So let's start again for our friends who couldn't get it. So what we did, we do, did we do? We said that if you want to register for off-campus access, you use off-campus access here. But if you just want to access the content, and when you click on that and log in, it will take you to the same page I'm going to. So you can go to online catalog and choose databases by subject. You get accounting and all the other ones here. So I have geography, health sciences, information set, international affairs, law, uh, marketing, uh, somebody you say project management may be under um, organization and human resource, but all of them accounting is, embodies almost everything that you are looking for. So let's say accounting, and I in accounting I can choose EBSCO host, Emerald, and the other one. So I'll start with Emerald. Good. Then when I go to Emerald, if I log on to the university to show the University of Ghana on the top right corner here. But I didn't log on to the university, so um, it doesn't show. How do I get the content to be able to start looking for the literature? Choose explore content. And then you choose there are different types of content, books, case studies, expert briefings, you want journals. So click on journals. Now, it is advisable that you start by using advanced search. The basic search is not bad, like how you have it in Google. Basic search is not bad, but advanced search can let you do more. So I go to advanced search. So within advanced search, I want to set journal articles. And I want to know, um, you see, look at what happens here. You can type your, what you're searching for, like corruption. And then you choose where you want to search for all that feels like the whole document. Or you want to search only the title, search the abstract, or search the name of the author, the one who contributed, like a button or something like that. So if I put the contributor, I have to put a name here. And I can add another rule. So I can even do um, kind of an intersection here to bring in corruption and maybe, let's say, Africa. So I want to see Africa and corruption. And I want corruption should be in the title of my paper and Africa should be in the abstract. I'm just trying for us to look at it. So I don't choose any year. As of now, I'll come back to the years later. So I choose. So let's take a look at it again. We put type in corruption. Then we're choosing the title. Then we added another rule and chose a type in Africa. Somebody said, Prof, should I start with Africa all the time? No, you can start. I, I usually will leave it with corruption to see all that has been done. Then I go, I go through the different continents. I do corruption, maybe Europe, corruption, Asia, corruption, developing economies of developing countries, then corruption, Africa, corruption, Ghana, corruption, Nigeria, corruption, Kenya, something like that. So that I can be able to draw, you see some papers will keep on showing every time you search. That means a very relevant paper, I cast across all of them. Okay, so when I search right now, I get 80, uh, 23, only just 23. I'm searching the abstract for Africa and I'm searching the title for corruption. So 23, combating corruption and economic crime in Africa, an evaluation of Botswana dietary of corruption and economic crime. Channels of corruption in Africa, an analytical review of trends in financial crimes. Okay, and then translational law and technology as potential forces against corruption in Africa. Fighting corruption in Africa, the anti-corruption system in Cameroon. Okay. Now, when you do this, it brings you what, because I put Africa here, it, it was able to draw the Africa from the, um, from the title of the, from the, abstract of the work. 
But let's say something. If I, it's only 23 papers. If I go back and I change my search, I could actually put in here Ghana. And let's see what will happen. And then I want abstract to have Ghana in it. I get only just one article. Oh no, I think about five articles. Yeah, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so one of them is on um, corruption perception level of a country. Does the corruption perception level of a country affect of a country affect listed firms, international financial reports, um, standards, seven risk disclosure compliance. This is more from accounting. And then corruption cause tax evasion, evidence for an emerging economy is coming from Ghana. And you can see here that you see that you see the same author, Kwame J means that he was also the other one who did on the accounting one. And he does disclosure. You see that that disclosures type of research. Relationship between corporate governance, corruption, and forward looking information disclosure. Okay. So what if I was doing something on SME financing? SME finance, or I can write small business financing. And I type, oh, sorry. Um, no, I don't want this. SME finance in the title. No, I don't, if the title, I may not get that one. So I may have to do small business financing. Okay, but I don't want it in the title. I'm also searching the abstract. I'm searching small business finance and I said, nothing. Can you see? I didn't get anything it's because of what I'm, the way I'm searching for it. Okay, so let me see again. Um, the, all the fields, small business financing. Good. So you can see here, e-business financing, preliminary insights from developing the current context. Henson and Richard Whiting. Okay. Then look at this one. Small business finance in Sub-Saharan Africa, a case of Ghana. Um, Charles Amoyati, 2011. And then you have micro determinants of extent of the extent of credit rush, rush, rationing, okay, and amongst MS, SMEs in Ghana. Okay, and then you have financing non traditional exports in Ghana, okay, 2002. That's far behind. How do you explain capital structure of SMEs? ABO. Okay. Determinants of female entrepreneurs' growth intention. A case of female-owned businesses in Ghana's tourism sector. That's interesting. So let's look at, I can now, a SME bank selection patronage behavior in, in Ghana, in Ghanaian banking uh, industry. But Manati, quite interesting papers here. The role of government and international competitiveness of SMEs, evidence from Ghanaian non-traditional exports. Okay. Wow, I can see a source of finance and small enterprise productivity. Growth in uh, in Ghana. Eric Osesi is in the. Um, somebody is saying that what password do you student password do you use? There's no student password. When you register, when you register um, for off campus access, you create your own password, and then you can use it to be able to come here. Then it will give you access to all the content, but through the university. And when you do that, you have to use the same browser. The same browser will open all the pages for you, but it will authenticate you to access the content. But don't worry, I'm going to show you how to access the same content without having, if you don't have off-campus access. So I will start a paper here that I'm interested in. Okay, so let's look at this one. Determinants of female entrepreneurs' good intentions. A case of female-owned business, small own, female owned small businesses in Ghana's tourism sector. So this one, you can realize that the paper itself is on determinants of female entrepreneurs. He looks, wants to look at good intentions, which is a sub -team. He's choosing the, um, um, a particular sector, not just in Ghana, he's choosing a tourism sector. So somebody can do this one and do it in a different sector. Okay. So now look at it here. So the purpose of this, purpose of the paper is stated here. Mm -hmm. This is a general name, General of Small Business and Enterprise Development. This paper seeks to find actors that influence the growth of female own small businesses in the Ghanaian tourism sector. The purpose of this paper is to investigate why some females, female entrepreneurs achieve, achieve growth objectives while others do not. <clears throat> now methodology, in this study, the authors seek to understand the growth intention within the tourism sector because it is not clear why some female entrepreneurs in Ghana pursue growth. 
Okay. Okay. And then it goes on to say, the study applies quantitative techniques. A questionnaire was conducted out with 110 female tourism entrepreneurs in Ghana. Data analysis was con conducted using the non parametric procedures of Spearman's rank correlation. The findings, the findings of research revealed that female in tourism entrepreneurs in Ghana can feel they can expand without entrepreneurial abilities. However, the growth of the venture is restricted by the lack of financial resources. Opportunities in the tourist sector do, do generate some more, more customers, but cannot alone determine good intentions. Furthermore, an important finding of this study is, is that a business that business advisory services do not contribute significantly, significantly to the good intention of the venture. Okay. The research made clear that pursuance of growth is related to different types of opportunities and finance leveraging. The research implication, the, gen, the study is gender specific, industry specific, size specific, and region specific limitation. And our limitation is focused on entrepreneurial ability opportunity. The business advisory support services are determinants of female growth intention. Then it talks about the implications of the study. Remember I told you that when you do a study, you have to look at the implications to policy and practice. So he talks about this study improves useful inform, provides useful information for government, business agencies, and academics seeking to seeking reasons on why female entrepreneurs have low growth intentions. The research social implication, this research will contribute to improve the socioeconomic status of women entrepreneurs in Africa. Originality, the value, what gap did you address that will make the paper very unique? This paper addresses address it under, under, an under-researched area of female tourism entrepreneurs and their growth intention for the perspective of developing countries. So you realize that he, he's emphasizing here that before he started the study, there were not much papers on female tourism entrepreneurs and their growth intention, especially from a developing country perspective. And that person has contributed that. So this is very, very good. Now, so Prof, you see, this paper is behind pay, gate, payment detail. How do I get it? So in this age of Corona, one of the things that we have realized is that, I think it was there before Corona, but it's working. You copy the, um, you go, don't quote me anywhere. You copy the DOI. The DOI is just a unique link that comes to the, to the particular website, um, article. You copy it and you go to Sci-Hub. Sci -Hub dot tw sci hub sci hyphen hub dot tw so i put it in here and if it is there sorry i put in the so this is the paper i'm using i'm sharing the paper to you with you i put it in the i put in the paper so you can try it so voila so you can do it yourself and see the paper has come so now i can download the paper onto my computer Good. So you see the whole paper is there. I can download the paper onto my computer. So most of the time, if you are struggling to get a paper, you can get this um, to DOI. You can use the DOI to guide you. I can use the DOI to guide you. Okay. So let's download the paper and see. And then look at it and then analyze the paper. Then we can go to another place. When you are downloading papers, it's advisable that you use intelligence to download the paper. So this paper is about female. Um, remember, I was sort of, I wanted to do a paper. I wanted to do my study on female on unemployment. So I've seen this is our determinants of female entrepreneurial growth intention. So let's say that I'm interested in doing a research on uh, um, entrepreneurship. Um, female entrepreneurs, female entrepreneurs, so female entrepreneurship. Try to create a folder on my computer called female entrepreneurship. Good. Then in that folder, I create a subfolder because this paper, that is the main folder. So I create another subfolder and I call it, this one is determinant good intention. So it's about female entrepreneurship, but good intention. So we write good intentions female entrepreneurship the paper was published in 2017 if i'm right in 2018 sorry you can see it here 2018 
So group growth, intention, female entrepreneurship, and then the paper is on Ghana. So I write Ghana and I add 2018 before I save it. Now what have I done? I've written the name of the, the paper is on female entrepreneurship. It's about growth intention, that's a sub-issue they're looking into. And then it's also about Ghana and it's in 2018. If I save it like that, anytime I go into my, hey, sorry, I was creating a folder, so I should have called, called, called the folder uh, good intention, sorry. So maybe I jumped a little bit. So the paper there, sorry, let me just, give me a second. Okay. So uh, good intentions. That's the subfolder I have under the female entrepreneurship. Then the file name, that will become that long thing I type. The file name, so I can look at the file. So the file name become good intentions, female entrepreneurship, um, the sub theme, the main theme, and then I added the country and the year so that I can save it into the folder. What have I done? Let me just show you what I've done. So when I come in here, you can look at it. Good intention, female entrepreneurship, Ghana 2018. So anytime I come to the folder and I see the paper, I can see that the paper is about Ghana. It looks at female entrepreneurship. It looks at good intentions in female entrepreneurship. And it was published in 2018. If I've saved the paper as PDF 1, PDF 2, when I come back, I can't even remember what is in the paper. So now if I'm looking for the paper, it's very easy because I've, I've given the country, the year, and then the theme and the sub theme in the, in the file name. It's good that you use some in, a, a, a good way of recording. This is what we call record and retrieve. We record with intelligent naming system so that when you're retrieving it back later, you can be able to identify it. We'll do another example later. So I'll save this one. So let's go back to uh, where were we were you were in Emerald. Eh? So let's go back to Emerald. So let's do advanced search. We are doing a, a study on female entrepreneurship. So now I don't want to do female entrepreneurship. And I don't want to do Ghana. I want to leave it open to Africa or developing countries. So that I can get other countries. Developing countries. And uh, I'm searching the abstract for developing countries. I can even check uh, female entrepreneurship can be the abstract. And then developing countries can be the all the fields. So let's see. I've changed it a little bit. So good. Look at this one. Constraints and opportunity facing women entrepreneurs in developing countries. So I've got to, I've been able to obtain something very, very specific to what I'm doing. A relational perspective. Interesting. Then look, let's go another one. Human development index predicts female entrepreneurship rates. Okay. Now look at this one too. Uh, Bahrain. Evolution of female entrepreneurship in Gulf Corporation Council. The case of Bahrain. Interesting. So I could actually open this report and then look at it again. Then female entrepreneurship in the Baltics, formal and informal context, Latvia, Lithuania, Lithuania, and Estonia. So this is very interesting. And then I have another one, entrepreneurial intentions of young women in Arab world, social, cultural, and educational barriers. You see, if your study was on female entrepreneurship, actually looking at these titles, you can even start thinking actually, can I do this one rather? Because I can check the abstract, let's see this one like this. What's the abstract saying? Look at the abstract. It's saying female entrepreneurship is a growing segment in the context of developing country and has potential to become a driving force for economic development. However, research suggests that female females are less inclined toward entrepreneurship when, when compared to their male counterparts. Now, this is just a similar to what we saw in the Ghana paper. This fact is related to a complex mix of causes, such as the belief that entrepreneurship is male domain setting conditions within the economic and social environment and the general lack of confidence with regards to succeeding in activities. Barriers to female entrepreneurship are prevalent in, in the patriarchal Arab world. The purpose of the paper, of this paper, is to measure the perceptions of female Jordanian, Jordanian business students with regards to socioeconomic and cultural barriers to entrepreneurship. It also looks at the conduciveness of education they are receiving in terms of new venture creation. Now, what you see here is that somebody can pick this one, just drop it to University of Ghana Business School, female business students, and study them. It's a similar thing that you can actually do. 
Because if you are doing, in, if you are from marketing department, you are doing entrepreneurship. This is a good subject for you to research on. A sample of two hundred and fifty-four females business students from two universities in Jordan was, was was asked to evaluate the various factors. So we can see that the person did that from. You can do University of Ghana and University of Cape Coast or University of uh, uh, Gimpa. Uh, so let's go down there. The role of women in the Arab world is quite marked, and the reluctance of women to take more decisive engagement in entrepreneurship may be reinforced by conservative societal tradition. A supportive education system has the potential to act as a catalyst to encourage active female participation in the entrepreneurial domain, thus helping to spare economic development in the region. So we, we see that this is an interesting paper published in, published in 2017. Okay, so if you want the paper, the same way that we actually, look at this one too, following the pathway of female entrepreneurs, a six country investigation, interesting. Wow. Yes, this one, here developing countries, see what I'm getting. Okay, so I'll copy the DOI. So copying the DOI, I go to Science Hub, and then I download. Oh, seems I didn't copy the DIY. Um, copy the DIY. Okay. Now let me share it with everybody just in case people want to um, get a paper themselves. So the DUI is here, sorry. And then I, okay, voila. So the paper is here. So to download it, what will we do? We choose, this is in Jordan. So this one is not about good intention. It's about, the paper is about uh, entrepreneurial intention, not good intention. So. I won't save it under good intention, but it's under female entrepreneur. So I'll save it under a new folder called entrepreneurial intentions. Then I will save the name. So this is 2017. So I need to say, that, okay, the paper is about entrepreneurial. This may not be the only paper on entrepreneurial intentions I'll find. So I have to save it to entrepreneurial intentions. And then it's about in Jordan, and it's also young people, young. I saw it's about young students. So I can just remember young students. Uh, and then it was 20, what, 2017. Okay, so now I can save it. So I can always come back to it. Okay, so in initially, I remember I argued that why do we do literature review? We do literature review to identify the gaps that exist in previous research. So let's look at this paper, for example. Determinants of female entrepreneurial good intentions. So look at the paper. There has been a, a marked increase in female entrepreneurial activity and recent business statistics identify women as drivers of economic growth in many world economies. So it gives you a number of references here. Ahmad et al, 2014. Lagowitz et al, 25, 205 and Divo Katoni, 2015. Now let's look at these references. Ahmad et al. Um, let me see if I can open it again. Okay, so I've opened it here. I'm opening here, I'm opening it again here. But this one, I'm going to only open the references so that we can quickly look at the references and we compare. We want to know where the materials the person is using to write is coming from. So Ahmad et al, Ahmad et al. You can see the paper, there's a paper on Abo. I told you that you can't write on the um, SMEs and things without talking about, even Abo has written something on female-owned businesses. So you see it there. So Ahmad et al, this is Ahmad et al's paper. Entrepreneurial choice in business venture in um, Peninsula, Malaysia. It is, it is a journal, it's coming from International Journal of Hospitality Management. So they have seen that Ahmad et al. Then he mentioned another paper. Uh, Lago Lagowitz 2005. So let's look at Lagowitz 2005. Lagowitz 2005. Lagowitz. I'm trying to take my time so that everybody can be with me. Lagowitz 2005. 
you look at it here, Global Entrepreneurship Monitor. That's actually a report by, uh, on women entrepreneurship. And that is a report. So he's looking at an industry report on global entrepreneurship. Look at what I told you. You can combine industry reports, you can use, and why is he using industry report? Look at this argument here. He says that in recent business statistics, identify women as drivers of the consumer. So where are the statistics coming from? They are also coming from language one, which is a report. Then he also has another one, Endivo and Katoni. 2015. So let's look at Endivo and Katoni. 2015. Endivo. Endivo. And Endivo. Endivo. Endivo and Katoni. Advances in hospitality and tourism research. An international journal of Adizen, Adizen Tourism Facility. Faculty. Sorry. Um, volume 3, number 3, pages number 116 to 134. So this is also a journal. So journal, journal report. Good. So now you see an example of what I told you. It is undisputable that when more women work, economies grow. Women economic and managerial activities have a significant impact on economic growth and prosperity. So look at this Global Entrepreneurship Monitor. That's the same report that we mentioned earlier. And Gentry 2007. So who is, who is Gentry 2007? GE, Gentry, 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 Gentry. Gentry 2007. It's also a, a, a journal. Belizean Women and Tourism Work. Announce of tourism, announce of tourism research. So now you see another one coming here. Okay, so now we have how many have you seen in general? One general, two general, three general. Yes, in this five references, you have got three of them being generals. Countries with high total entrepreneur activities are associated with female, high female entrepreneur activity rates. Verhel and Van Mill, 2011. So Verhel and Van. I'm just trying to illustrate. Where references come from? Where hell? Another one, General, International Journal of Entrepreneurial Venturing. And he's actually quoting from Dutch. What determines the growth ambition of Dutch early age, early stage entrepreneurs? Okay, so we have seen that one. Then this underscored, this is underscored by the general, general shift from large state owned corporation to small and medium private owned enterprise. Galloway, et al. 2005 and Hujin Don and Rogerson in 2015. Now, all this is our papers from developed countries. He's not come to now down Ghana and Africa. So now look at the first part. He gave acknowledgement to what has been done, what's happening across Africa, other worlds, other places. So that's why I said, you can't just read on just Africa. He's read, he's brought examples from Denmark, that's Europe. He's brought examples from the world global entrepreneurship monitor at a global level to so world economies. You see all the discussion here was about the world, the world, the world. Now let's look at here. He's saying that, so Galloway et al. and Hujin. So let's see that one to Galloway, Galloway, Galloway. Uh, Galloway is Jane, 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 Jane. Galloway is also coming from education and training journal. Journal again. And then who, who do we know? Who the one? Um, who do one? Who Jin? Who Jin Don? Okay, it's coming here. Tourism geography in global south. New South African perspective. Pretoria. This seems to be a report, but doesn't have any other um any um journal name there. It seems to be a report. Okay, so in Ghana, as in most African countries, entrepreneurship has not become very strong. Yet it's still its potential to contribute to general socioeconomic growth and to socioeconomic status of women is recognized. Abo and, and Big, Big Bay, Big Bay, and Elijah and Elijah Mensah. This is a very popular person, Elijah Mensah. So Abo, you know Abo already from our former dean, Abo. Uh, Abo is the first one we saw here. Abo here is a general. And then Elijah, Elijah Mensah, who have come across his work or her work, I think she's a female. Elijah is E, Elijah Mensa A. Okay, Journal of Travel and Tourism, Motivation and Age, an empirical study of women tourism ventures in Ghana. I think she's in, I don't know if I'm right, but in Kikos University, but this is quite interesting. So you have quite a number of different authors coming here. Oh, sorry. So we have it here. Now let's go back. So for instance, you see, he made this argument and said, for instance, then he's going to illustrate. The Global Entrepreneurship Monitor established 
that Ghana is the only economy with more female than male entrepreneurship. Wow, interesting, I didn't know. Now, all these are statistics. Besides data from the GEM 2010, Elijah Mensah in 2009 stated in her study, I told her she's a female, that an estimated 65% of tourism jobs in Ghana are occupied by women. And, the tourism, and, and that tourism is the only sector in Ghana with more women in managerial position. That's interesting. Further investigation revealed that Ghanaian women have passion to establish small businesses in tourism. This broad observation shows that Ghana has a potential to develop its tourism entrepreneurial sector, particularly for women. He has made a very good case for women and tourism. Ghana is located in the Gulf of Guinea in West Africa. Interesting. <laughs> it's a tropical north. It's a tropical country north of the equator. I don't know why you know this. Okay. Currently, tourism plays a relatively moderate but growing role in the economy of Ghana. Then it's giving some statistics of how tourism contributed to Ghana. Then makes then you say, however, many of the Ghanaian tourism resources and assets are underdeveloped. Kakari. So all here is about statistics and issues about Ghana. Now let's see where he makes a case for the study. However, women tourism enterprises in Ghana are uncompetitive, and the majority are engaged in small and very small micro business. Kakari et al. Some of some stuck at the micro level are unable to expand. African Development Forum. So he's using he's using a, a, an industry or a development agency's report, often with low aspiration for growth. Ahmad Ahmad's paper. Since many empirical studies have not drawn the attention. So he's making a gap. He said that since many empirical studies have not drawn attention to female entrepreneurial good intention and why these female businesses in tourism failed to grow. Taking that into account, uh, since many, okay, since many of them have not done so, taking into account the potential role of female entrepreneurs in generating economic growth, investing, investigating and in their relationship of business opportunity for women-led companies and their good intention seems to be highly recommended. So there's a need to look at that. The paper proceeds by reviewing evidence in studies of female entrepreneurship. This is followed by a review of literature of good intention and on female entrepreneurship in tourism sector. It further identifies information on growth intention with emphasis on female entrepreneurs in tourism sector. Finally, the paper draws conclusion proposes recommendations to support female entrepreneurs in pursuit of good intentions of female-owned businesses in the tourism sector of the developing country. Okay, so it seems to seem, this seems to be um, a very good, interesting paper. Let's see whether they have a... So from there, you, you see that... Um, let me just point something to you. He goes to a literature review, where he defines what female entrepreneurship is and explains the dimensions of female entrepreneurship. Then from there... He goes on to talk about female entrepreneurship in the tourism sector. So he's trying to narrow it down to the core things he wants to discuss. And all the papers that are for those sections are specific to what he wants, to, she want, he or she wants to write. I just want to jump from here and then go to the conclusion of the paper. Usually that's where, this is the methodology, where the data was collected. Okay, so let's see conclusion. The so conclusion comes here. And in the conclusion, let's see whether he has any recommendation for future research. Mm. Okay, discussion. Mm -hmm. Okay, it doesn't actually make any cases. He either makes implication to policy and practice. He's giving advice. There's a need to encourage private sector development to partner with female entrepreneurs. So he makes a case here. So it doesn't make any future research directions per se which is oh, quite unfortunate. But I actually pointed out what has been done so far. I was expecting him to, that's sometimes what you come to realize. Some of the people don't make any case for future research, but they just conclude with what they want to conclude with. Okay, so this is that paper. Let's look at this one. Uh, another one on is entrepreneurial intentions of women in an Arab social cultural education barriers. So this one also starts with um, making a case for the Arab world and talks about some statistics. You can see 60% here talking about contribution to unemployment. 
Okay. Mm -hmm. He talks about why Jordan was selected for the study. Jordan was a context of analysis for this study for a number of reasons. First, Jordan is a highly educated and dynamic and young population who is facing increasing levels of unemployment. So he, he also brings justification of making choosing Jordan. And then he goes on to explain what the study will do. Okay. And then he goes on to explain what will be the contribution of the study. The contribution of this research are twofold. First, Jordan is interesting context in which to measure female entrepreneurial intention and potential barriers to entrepreneurship. Jordan, Jordan is predominantly Muslim, patriarchal and tribal society. A number of females pursuing education is high compared to other Arab states. Yet due to social cultural norms, female labor force participation rates are low. Okay, even though they are more educated, there are more of them are in the workforce. However, then there's a steady influx of refugees from neighboring countries have overburdened the infrastructure and public services. Okay. Therefore, there is an urgent need to encourage entrepreneurial attitude. Second, the paper provides evidence that can be utilized in shaping policies. So it's mentioning what the paper would, um, some of the contributions of the paper. Okay, so what you see here is that these are all papers, this, all these papers try to make a case of why they are doing this research and why they do this research in a particular, particular area. Then let's look at his conclusion, whether he says some future research directions. Some people do, some people don't do, okay. Wow. Okay, so look at this. Some research limitations must be acknowledged. First, the sample comprised of female students from two, only two universities in Jordan. This limits the generalizability of the re uh, results. Future studies should concentrate on enlarging the sample to include female students from other universities. So that's one thing that you could see. Sometimes somebody can do only public universities. So you may be saying that future studies should do private universities versus public. The entrepreneurial intentions of male students could also be examined, so you can compare male and female. This would allow for comparison between genders, as I said, said that. Second, the sample was also limited to female students studying business. It would be interesting to investigate the entrepreneurial tendencies of students studying in other disciplines. And then particularly, somebody is drawing on my screen. Okay. So I'll clean that. Okay, let's continue. Particularly, engineering, which is a very popular and prestigious field of study in Jordan for both males and females. Currently, there's an, an oversaturation of engineering galleries, and government has made repeated calls to high school students to avoid that discipline. Interesting. <laughs> a country that doesn't like want any more engineers. <laughs> this is interesting. Therefore, it's important to understand if engineers are equipped with the right skill to create business startups instead of rely on public and private sectors for employment. So what do you see here? Future research should look at, should look at engineering students. So if you want to do a, a, a future research, you could also compare other disciplines in Ghana or look at females and males and in comparison. But there are future research studies that are mentioned there. But even here, the future research studies are emphasized on Jordan. But you can also apply to Ghana and some of the future research you can do. So most often you see that in the academia, the research gaps are put in the beginning and the end of the work, in the beginning. We'll talk about this again next week, but I just wanted to show you. So now we have looked at our Emerald. So let's look at other disciplines, that other um, platforms. We have look at Emerald. What else do we want to look at? Let's check. Um, there's one called Killer and Francis, one called Science Direct. So let's check Science Direct. So Science Direct, very good platform. Or science base. Oh, let me open it. Good. So we have done Emerald. Let me close all these ones. Okay. Good. So science direct. Oh. Um, so in science direct, we have here. I've opened science direct. That gives you this platform. I can choose advanced search, but it doesn't tell us much here. So let's say um, we are talking about, still talking about female entrepreneurship.
Okay, in, uh, let's say in, in Africa, let's see what we'll get, female entrepreneurship. Um, was my spelling wrong? Okay. So I've got two, only two coming up. Wow. So I may have to change a little bit. Mm. Let me do developing countries and see. Four. Wow. I think it's my spelling. Entrepreneurship. Okay. Good. Uh -huh. My my spelling was wrong, so it does not get in giving me. So let me do Africa again. Okay, 137,378 articles. So look at this, business as a family. Family as business, film entrepreneurship in Kampala. Interesting. Joe Forum. Opportunity and necessity entrepreneurship in the hospitality sector, examining the institutional environmental influences. So there are quite a number of interesting papers here. Let's see this one, the Uganda one. Okay, so I have this paper here. Um, female entrepreneurship has become a, a key policy focus of governments and development agencies in the global south, relying on the figure of independent businesswoman. This article advances the debate on the relationship between entrepreneurship and the family through a longitudinal study of experiences of female entrepreneurs in Kampala. It is a study of a four year panel of life history of interviews where we demonstrate the value of entrepreneurial life course. That's interesting. Okay, so if you want the paper, we would have done this and then go to Science Direct and go to SciHub to see whether we can get the paper. Um, so I open SciHub. Good. And we put it in, we check, and we get a paper. Good. Then we save it again. F business as family, female entrepreneurship. So this one's looking at. It's also about entrepreneurial intentions and from a family perspective. So I'll keep it in family, business, and just publish in, it seems in 2019, if I'm right. I can't remember, but it's about Uganda. And let me write 20, oh, I've ended up saving it already. <laughs> it's about Uganda. Okay. Okay. So it's 2019. So, um, family business, Uganda, 2019. Now let me save it. Good. Now I've saved it. So let's open it and see. And zoom in. So this is how, you see, Sign Direct is published by Elsevier. So Elsevier's logo is here. So you can scroll down and see. Um, Okay, so there's quite a lot of, a lot of he's pointing out some gaps here. So look at this one he's saying here. Okay, studies on economic activities of women in the global south often locate themselves within separate, albeit related to a set of debates in informal economy, which examine women's adverse incorporation to capitalist markets. As a result, there remains a need, that's a gap, for contextual empirical work that engages with the distinctiveness of women businesses the difference between them and the social fabric on which they depend. How does entrepreneurship as a gender geographic progress process differ across time and space? To what extent is the female entrepreneurship, is female entrepreneurship in the global south, that's in uh, developing countries, embedded in some, the same sets of social relations as, in, as that in the global north, the nuclear family? What types of relationships matter for female entrepreneurship at what times and in which spaces? That's very interesting. So if you are a female entrepreneur and you are growing, what type of relationships matter to you? And in what time and what spaces? Is it a nuclear family relationships? What, what is your view about this? And what, what are your preferences? Okay, this paper answers, explore this question through a detailed empirical search, research in Kampala, a capital city, the capital of a country that has recently been declared as the most entrepreneurial in the world. Interesting. Drawing on entrepreneurial life course perspective, we chart the evolving relationship between women, businesses, and their colleagues, and household, and extended families. That's interesting. The following sections seek to 
for the following sessions seek to ground this inquiry within the global and regional literatures on female entrepreneurship. A discussion methodology is then provided and followed by analysis of experience of our Ugandan participants. Interesting, very, very. So now, if you, I believe that this paper like this, at the end of it, it will tell you some future research direction for those who want to research on female entrepreneurship. So look at it here. Okay. Okay. Let's see. Hmm. Okay, so what he says here, I don't think he makes a very key, key statement. I said that the findings consolidate existing work on social and familial embeddedness of female entrepreneurship. However, they also extend this work by demonstrating the value of entrepreneurial life course perspective for revealing temporal dimension of female entrepreneurship. This perspective is critical to understanding, for example, the ways in which marriage can facilitate female entrepreneurship during certain phases of the entrepreneurial cycle and restricted during others like post launch and expansion. The volatile relationship between entrepreneurial, entrepreneurship and marriage in particular poses a challenge to the spatial and temporal stability that is often implied in family embeddedness literature in global north. So me, I can see here for me as an academic, I can see here that future studies should do more on the, should first of all use the uh, entrepreneurial life course approach. And number two, look at the impact of the family at the beginning at the beginning of the entrepreneurial cycle of a woman that's during the launch it, it supports it and then during the post the launch it restricts it post launch and expansion it, res it restricts it i would like to explore that dynamic in ghana that's family um, uh, uh, family expectations either constrain or enable um women entrepreneurship and at what cost of the entrepreneurial life cycle does it do so that's an interesting research piece that somebody could look into. Okay, so now we have had an interesting, we have looked at the same thing from um, Science Direct. So now let's go back again and then check another one. So we can look at um, Wiley, Wiley and Taylor and Francis. So come to Wiley, go to Wiley first, sorry. I should have opened it by right clicking so that I can always come back here. Wiley, 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 Wiley. So I got into Wiley and I need to search. So I'm searching here. Let's see what am I going to find? I'm looking for, I use them. I can use advanced search here too again. You know what I You see, I can search either the title or keywords. So I'm looking for female entrepreneurship. Or here, let's change it a little. Let's do something on stakeholder communication. And then, and then let's add um, another keyword as project. Maybe so for those who are doing project management. Okay, so I got wow. Stakeholder coming a chapter. Oh, there's only one journal I got. Wow. Okay, so let me refine my search. Okay, so managing stakeholder communication, the Q Stock Festival case. So this is interesting. Okay. This research develops understanding of project stakeholder management through examining how stakeholder communication is facilitated and managing the different phases of project life cycle. That's very good. By building upon information processing view and the stakeholder salience framework, our study shows how stakeholder communication patterns vary among in personal, personal and group modes of communication. So you could actually download and also check what this people could require for us. You could also search here. Um, those of you in HR, why is a very good platform? You see, they even have a project management journal. So those of you in HR, try and make sure that you don't miss Wiley. Okay. So let's see what, what will happen here. If I go to search uh, for this one. So I go in here. I just want to be sure that SciHub is working for almost all of them. So let me come in here. I put it here, I open it and I get, voila. Okay, so that's the paper. And if I read the paper to give me more information on what I want to do. Let me look at the conclusion of the paper, whether they have any, oh. 
Look at it. They have limitation. Oh, this is interesting. Let me save it. Okay, this one is not about entrepreneurship. So I can't save it in my entrepreneurship folder. It's not about female entrepreneurs, it's about project management. So I'll go back to my desktop. Um, I don't have anything on project management here. Um, so let me create a folder for project management. Project. Then I inside, I just have another folder for stakeholder, um, stakeholder communication. Okay. Then I save it, stakeholder, communication. I'm not very sure of the country. Killstock Festival, I don't know where it is, maybe maybe Europe. So let me just say Europe. And then, and then I add 2015, so that I can remember where the paper was. Okay, so now I open it. I want my colleagues here. Oh, it's you, Finland, 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 I'm okay. <laughs> Good, it's you. So let's look at, it's even in Finland, okay. It's a festival, music festival. People are studying music festival, like somebody studying Ghana music, music awards. It's very interesting, okay. That's not a music festival anyway, but I'm just saying that's an awards festival. Um, so let's see. They have a section called limitations and future research, like I've been saying, a very good paper has it, okay. So it tells you some things here. Um, future research could engage in collecting large scale data from other empirical content to test presented conclusions. So, this is clear somebody can do stakeholder communication in um, managing stakeholder communication in another project in another country because they have said it here, but he wants large scale data. So, you have to look at bigger projects. Then it goes here to say something that our case project has repetitive elements in similar festivals that have been organized for several years. A stakeholder network could be partly characterized, characterized by close and embedded ties cultivated among the key participants. So, he's saying that future research could assess the ways in which the nature of the project, particularly its repetitiveness, affects the modes of communication. The modes of communication, the, the communication modes implemented. What he's trying to emphasize here is that most often, if a, a project is repetitive, the people get to know how to work together. So it affects the way they communicate among each other. They may have a better and smoother communication, which is in this crystal festival that he reviewed. So why don't we look at other studies in which the project is a new project and we can look at how the people build their, manage their communication patterns or communication modes, the people who are working on the project. Another fruitful avenue for research will be to study the relations among company strategy, stakeholder communication strategy, and then um, communication modes. Okay, that's interesting. Looking at different strategies and how they affect communication. Okay, then it goes on to say something here. In the context of our study, utilizing modern ICT in stakeholder communication is still its infancy to that. People are not looking at IT and how it affects stakeholder communication. So what he's saying is that previous studies in cultural industry have presented similar conclusions. Because social media and Facebook and LinkedIn can offer such organizations that and stakeholders with effective tool for relationship building and networking, this could be they could be crucial in the success of festivals in future. Federal research could systematically assess the use and implications of communication or use the use and implication of such communication practices. So he's saying that future studies can look at how social media affects communication modes and communication patterns within. Uh, projects which have to do with like festivals, creation of music festivals, or creation of uh, cultural festivals. Very, very interesting. That gives you a room for you to do your own research before it goes to your conclusion. So please, when you take a paper, be looking out for the introduction, the paper, the, what you have said in the introduction, that necessitated him to do the work or her to do the work. And then when you go to the end, look at the, um, the other research sometimes the future research directions and limitations that he's actually emphasizing that people should look into to address, to be able to shape other research related to the same topic. Okay, so now that we have this, let's go back to our slides. Um, oh, I said I would do Taylor and Francis, so let's check Taylor and Francis. I, just, I don't want to forget about Taylor and Francis. Taylor and Francis is here. Um, if it doesn't open, I know why it doesn't open. Because the link they type is not complete. So I'll show you the complete link. They left the dot com. So you just type dot com to add to it. Let me copy it for everybody here. 
So you have it here. So Taylor and Francis, okay, let's do something more interesting. Interesting, interesting. Let's look at digital um, fake news. We have heard about fake news. Let's look fake news. Let's see what will happen. Wow, fake news, a lot of stuff. Digital literacy, fake news, and education. That's so much for us. Now, somebody was asking, Prof, so how many, which literature should I look, which year, sorry, which year should I look into? I always advise that if you want gaps, try, try to stay within the five years, last five years, or last seven years, so that you can get contemporary gaps. That are, uh, because the older the document, it may be good in giving you some background understanding, but if there are some gaps there, it could have been addressed already. If it's a book paper is 10 years old, and if a paper is 15 years old, it's, the gaps could have been addressed by other papers that have been more recent. So you want to look into, um, I'm, I'm looking at this, I'm getting fake news, quite a lot of things. So I just want to add social media. Mm, I can use advanced search there, but I'm just trying this one. Okay, fake news. Acceptance by demographics and culture um, on, on social media. Okay. Colonel Africa. Let's try to add Africa so that we see whether we can get any study on Africa as fake news. Oh, still good. Exploratory study of fake news and media trust in Kenya, Nigeria, and South Africa. Wow. Fake news, two dimensional phenomena, framework and research agenda. Too good to be true, too good not to share. Utility of fake news. Okay, information, communication, and society. So let's look at the one on South, this one which is published in the, where is it published? Published in the Journal of Af African General Studies, Journalism Studies, okay. So we don't have access to the, the full paper. We have to pay for it, 30, $44, okay, so, we go to coronavirus way of opening it. Okay, that's voila, we are here. This has fake news. Okay, so that gives us good, interesting information on fake news. Uh, let me see whether he has any future research directions to. Okay, so he has some. Um, I'm not downloading. Okay, let me download it. Let me just say fake news. Africa in 2019. Okay. So let's open it and let's see the conclusion of the paper. The paper, you can, if you, I don't know whether anybody will do a research on this area, but I just want to show you something here. I saw some future studies being pointed there. Look, we recognize that our data is only exploratory and broadly generalizable claims cannot be made. This is because of two shortcomings in the research design. The relatively small size of the sample and the fact that the, sam the data oversamples educated and highly educated individuals. Beyond both these limita limitations affect external validity and reduce our ability to confidently speak of the entire population. Due to budget constraint restriction, we had to compromise on these to, in order to conduct a multi-country study, which we saw as necessary. However, while our data that cannot describe absolute accuracy on the, the with absolute accuracy the three countries, it should provide a robust picture of how educated citizens deal with fake news. Okay, that's good. We believe that the study findings are nevertheless important ground, important as the grounds for further comparative research. Good. Future studies could build on these exploratory findings and the questions we were unable to answer to investigate how media users display ag agency and what can be done to rebuild trust in the media. Two, such studies could explore in more detail how users detect and define fake news, and why such items appeal to them to an extent to which they are willing and knowingly share them with others and other users. A combination of a longitudinal nationally represented survey, so studying it in the country longitudinally over time, and then qualitative data interviews from focus and focus groups will be, so you're talking about method gaps, and then he's talking about um, um, some issues that you should look into. Uh, would be a combination of longitudinal national representative surveys and qualitative data from interviews and focus groups would be 
pro, would be able to provide the granular detail needed to, needed to better inform policy recommendation. The question of trust, however, exceeds the phenomenon of fake news as mis and disinformation in African context is also a functional, a function of structural factors such as control over suppression of and ownership of the news media. Responses to the lack of trust in African media should have to go beyond media literacy campaigns and counter mis and disinformation with fact checking actions to include more structural interventions as well. A multi-leveled approach to remedying the lack of trust in African media is therefore called, called for. Interesting. So now you see the gaps are here. Very, very interesting gaps here. For those of you who want to do studies on this area. So gaps are in the end and in the beginning. I just wanted to emphasize that gaps are in the end and the beginning. Okay. So let's go back. Now I've shown you almost a number of the different platforms that and how they work. Okay, so when we come here, we have off-campus access. We talked about that. Then I also told about said that we should use advanced search, which is very good for searching for your articles, and then you ensure the relevance. Somebody says, so how many should I download? Hmm. It's a difficult question. If you find a relevant article, download. But me, what I try to do is that as I search, I look at the first 25 that come. If I'm not very, and I search again using different parameters and try to see whether I can narrow down to a good set of different articles. But it doesn't mean that I'll read all of them. I may read only those ones that tend to matter. And I can, for some of them, I'll do a quick read, which I'll explain that later. I can just read only just the abstract and get an idea of what is there. Or I'll just summarize by writing the key points that I want to identify from the paper by just skimming through it in one page. Okay. So when you've done that, then you are going to do one thing called save Sorry. Hey. Okay, thank you. Save the document onto your PC and categorize the documents, which we talked about that. And this is what I was doing. You have the main thing you are trying to do as a key folder. And you have subfolders there. So I had a subfolder for um, entrepreneur intention, growth intentions. And the other one, I had a, a subfolder for female female entrepreneurs, I had one on um, female entrepreneurs in terms of family and business, and I had another one too on their intentions. So you could actually see that you can have different groupings depending on the thematic areas that you identify in the literature. Why is it good to categorize? So that I can easily write. If I want definition on female entrepreneurship, I can look at any of the papers. But if I want family and female entrepreneurship, I have to go to the folder of family. If I want Growth intentions, I go to the good intentions folder. If I want uh, entrepreneurial intentions, I go to the entrepreneurial intentions folder. If I want motivation, I go to the motivations folder. Sometimes some students also categorize by country, so they or continent. So Africa papers will be in idea one, Europe papers in idea two, Asia papers in idea three, North America papers in idea four. So that I can be able to compare the discussions across. Whichever one will work for you, I would advise you to try and do that so that you can be able to have a grasp of the uh, a grip of all the literature that you have downloaded. Otherwise, you have so much literature you have downloaded and you can't do much with it. Okay. So from here, we go to um, the summary. So this is a one-page summary that you can do. You can take any paper you have downloaded and then identify the papers, the author, name of the author and then the problem or question they're trying to solve. If there's any framework, any definition, you can write the page number. If the method, you can write quantitative or qualitative. The key finding that matter to you, if it's necessary, if not necessary, you can leave that blank and go to conclusion or the gaps that you need. I usually do that in a one page to just identify the key papers I'm reading. Key papers I'm reading. So Frank has a question, let me allow. Frank, you are muted, so you can ask your question. Frank. Frank, you are on mute you can ask your question. Frank, you can ask your question. Okay, let me mute him again. Okay, so you have here um, one page that you can use to just summarize what you have. And then you can be able to know what is inside. Okay. The next thing that I'll try to do, okay, I give the students this practice assignment that they go to Emerald and download a paper on mobile and micro trading and try to summarize it in one page. 
you can try it yourself. You can do it for any paper. Don't you just do it for this paper. You can do it for any paper. But it's important that you get to know how to do these things so that next time you meet, I'll take you to how to select a research gap based on the papers you have downloaded. Then we can then move to how to write. So that's what I'll try to teach you next time. How do you select a research topic based on what you have downloaded? How do you identify the gap from there? We, we did a few of it today, but I will do into detail next time we meet. Thank you very much. I also want to have emphasize here is that um, when we go to Sakai, so now I know some students were asking questions about Sakai, Sakai. So let me just do a new share on Sakai. Mm -hmm. When you go to Sakai, what you realize is that I have put um, videos there for you to watch. So let me choose Okay. Don't worry, it's asking me the Masakai timeline is not. <laughs> anyway. Okay. Good. So I'll go to MBA. I've selected the MBA, let me choose a student. So please, when you go to the MBA platform, um, EMBA platform or the MBA platform, whichever one you go to, look at the video lessons and then look at session one. So the ones which have been online interaction, session one and two, the video is there. If you click on it, it will, it will take you to Google Drive. You can download or play it yourself, but the files are, um, are quite huge because of the quality. Then you have session two and three A. Today, what I just taught, I've done an example already with the previous group. So for example, it will bring you to a page like this. And if you click on it, it will start playing. Having a session today, I'm recording onto my computer so that later I can share it with you. So later on, I'll update this platform with the recorded videos. But on this Sakai platform, as I mentioned earlier, on the right hand side, you have the announcement. On the left hand side, you have the. So I'm just showing you some of the content that the course, is there. I'll call description, the resources um, where you download the slides for me, smart for. Secondly, you're not talking about um, hey. Senator who was passing to a town. Oh, this is a wrong and we all get, Okay, I will update the link later. I've, I've opened the other one. Rather. But try to read it economic activity that we mentioned earlier is fast at the unit level okay at the, with activity with the particular equipment or the activity at the at okay the, we are looking at session at the level one and two that's why at the level of a team or a group so at the level of the whole organization so there could be so many different perspectives to that okay so if you are doing a study on the first let me see i think i've interchanged them this one is supposed to be here it's not supposed to be down here so i'll, I'll do the right thing for you to have it Okay. Okay, still the same session one and two. Next year, they could. So I'll, I'll, this, I'll give the other link later. I think I have the other link, but I'm not sure. So much it. more on. Okay. Things which are very so I'll get you the one which there. talks Let's about what I've just done today. Study. It's not bad, but the difficulty. Thank you very much. Now, let me answer your questions, please. Um, you asked a question here that must the research topic be always be a gap of the previous research or can be entirely new research that has not been done? You see, every research that you are doing, it's a, if what you say is um, entirely a new research, I don't know what you mean by entirely a new research because it will build, it will depend, every research will depend on previous research that exists. Yeah, the, otherwise, where are you taking the concepts from? So by all means, there'll be some research that you have to draw upon because they belong to a larger body of, of, of literature. So you can't say that there's any, there's uh, what you're doing, so nothing that exists. Then how will you get words to write? For example, I can't say I'm researching female, um, for female unemployment is so new that I cannot, 
I will not read any literature on unemployment. The, the fact that I'm doing film on unemployment does not mean that literature on unemployment or unemployment in general is not good. It might be good. It might even give me an idea. Just that I'm looking at film, a sub, a sub theme in that. So it's very difficult. Coronavirus. Coronavirus has been there for some time and it belongs to pandemics have been there. So I don't know why we're saying that coronavirus is a research that has not been there. Coronavirus has, the questions you are going to ask, pandemics have been there. Uh, let me give an example. The student, and uh, one of my students is now trying to look at the impact of, um, um, the impact of uh, students' perceptions concerning uh, compulsory usage of technology, um, um, of e-learning platform during the corona, coronavirus period. Now, this is just e-learning studies, and it's looking at comp compulsory use of technology. So just, just that this one happens to be in a pandemic. So it's not, it's not surprising that it's still about the same thing. So coronavirus has something to do, a relationship in, a, in, 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 if you go to the body of literature in medicine, or even pandemics and even so, um, uh, um, um, epidemics, such scenarios of occurred in literature. So you'll find something to discuss concerning. The SARS, for example, was there. And then maybe how Africa is responding to it too, it's also about how we respond to other um, outbreak in, in diseases. Ebola recently came, so there's literature from Ebola to even be, to begin from. So you can't say there's totally something new. Then how did you get, get the word coronavirus? If you check, there was even a paper way back in 2015 that was that actually talked about um, um, coronavirus being as coming up. As we are 2015, somebody pointed it to me yesterday. It was published in 2015, American Society of Medicine or something like that. Somebody published a paper on Corona, and the word coronavirus was in the paper. So it, you, you may so it will surprise you that this is because we are here as a new thing. So it, you may not say that you have a material, but even that there are um, other partition literature that have been published from WHO that you can read, read to be able to support your work. What's the minimum number of books and articles? There's not like a minimum number. I, I, I emphasize that whenever you are writing, look at what you are writing, that one will guide you. Look at what you are writing, that one will guide you. So if you look at some of the examples of papers we're going through, what you end up realizing is that for, sometimes for every 50 words, there's a reference. Look at this, the number of words here. Look at the number of references here. One, two, three. Then it goes here, another reference is here. Then it goes here, another reference is here. Then it goes another sentence, another reference. One, two, three again. So I tell students every 50 words has about at least one unique reference. If you look at this guy, this guy, he's even doing more than that. He's even doing three references at the end of about 50 words. And then another reference comes, another three references comes again. So you see that with this small, uh, about 100 words he has written, he has one, two, three, four, five, six and uh, seven but two of these two are repetition the same thing so he has six different references and i was saying 50 words in every um 50 every 50 words has one unique reference he has about 100 words here he has six reference five references uh, and he has six references there it's actually seven but one of them is a repetition so six references there then if i go to another 50 words he has written here see he has one two three so your, your longest essay is supposed to be 50, uh, 12,000 words or 60 pages. You can do your mathematics yourself. <laughs> is that good or too much? It is good. It's making sure that he's well read, remember? And it's substantiating his argument. So it's good that he's showing that he has no literature. In fact, when you bring your work to me and I count, I look at the whole page, I see only one reference. I say, you're not read enough. I'll give it back to you. You're writing from your head. That's what I'll tell you. Okay. Sandra, very good question. Please, can you help us? on how to search on what our supervisor is good. That's a good question, I nearly forgot. So let's say, that's a very, very good question. Thank you very, very much. So let's continue. Let's go to the University of Ghana. I said I'll do that. So let me go to the University of Ghana Business School website. Forgive me, I need to share, uh, I need to share our, um, I don't know which I'm sharing right now. Um, I don't know what I'm sharing. This I'm sharing. Okay, so I'm sharing this one. Okay, good. So let me show you something in particular. 
okay, in, in USC of Ghana Business School website. Okay. UGBS. Mm -hmm. You realize then you go to faculty and choose by department. Then you look at the department that you want to look into. Let's say accounting. Give you the different people in accounting. Uh, so if I want to know what people are doing, I can just click on their name. Or let me go to, let's say, HR. So I choose Abu Ghari like this. I can see his research work. I can read about his research work. And he, what he, he researches on HRM practices, communication, engagement of employees in organizations, general publications. These are some of his papers that he has published on relations on work at workplace, cynicism and intention to leave, um, determinants of academic mentoring in higher education, institutional governance and management systems in sub Saharan Africa education, organization commitment and communication of CSI activities. Okay, so I can get to know what they research on and the papers that are published. I can also check Ambosateria. Um, he researches on occupational health, safety management, CSR, Work family conflict, change management, organizational development, general publications. So I have his general publications, his book chapter, and books. Okay, so you can read them. What is interesting that I would advise that you can do is that you can also then go to Google Scholar. Okay, so um, I couldn't get time to show Google Scholar. So let's let me use that one to choose scholar.google.com. Um, you can type the name of the lecturer like Justin Bowley. And then get his his profile and see all the papers he has published. You can click on them to read his works. You can sort by year. You can sort by year and then read the works. Okay. So he even tells you what he researches on. When you click on University of Ghana, to give you a whole list of people in University of Ghana so that you can look at their profiles too. But you can type the name of the faculty in here. Okay. If I was doing my uh, study on female entrepreneurship, I could have done a similar thing here too. See what I'm getting, quite a number of them. I'm searching the different database. This is from Springer, Springer, Taylor and Francis. So I can click on it to take me to Taylor and Francis. And then I can then copy the DOI and then use it to get a paper. But Google, Google um, Scholar is very, very good. It's very good to bring some, it can help you to do a very good search and get a good picture of what has been done so far. So to get the authors, you can type the authors and their works. Their you see, sometimes the business school website will just give you an overview of the lecture. But as you come in here, you get to know the contemporary works that the person has done. Um, so as I'm typing, it is giving me the different, the name of the lecture. I look at it here. Okay, good. So you quite well published. Um, see the different papers that he has in 2020. All of them are there. All of them are there. Okay, so I've answered your question um, in terms of what I'm supposed to do. Um, as your research always come from your department, yes. It should, even if, it, even if it's multidisciplinary, you should try to make sure that. Uh, you are coming from, you are doing it from the perspective of your department, from the perspective of your department. Okay. So any other questions? <laughs> any other questions? Any other questions? Okay. Yes, our research is supposed to be around what your supervisors are doing so that it's easy for the supervisors to supervise you. If a supervisor is okay with you doing something that he has never done before, then that's okay. But you have to check with your supervisor what he wants and what he expects you to do. He is supervising you. He can't supervise you if what you are doing, he doesn't understand it. Okay. Thank you very much. So I'll, I realized that the, I put the wrong link there. So for the second video, I'll just update you the data by tomorrow morning. 
so they can have a video based on what I've done here today. Thank you very, very much. Is there any other question that I need to answer? Okay, I don't have yes, any sir. Yes, please. So, Prof, um, in the event that the um, doesn't end anytime soon, what comes of the examination? Um, as of now, the best thing I advise you is that do all your assignments that is being given to you. If anything happens and you have to do examination online, and we will let you know. And we'll, we'll, we are doing all those considerations. The discussion has not yet ended, but it's very likely that take, take every assignment, every lecture is given to you serious, both or in other and all the lectures are given to you because we, can, we, we may put everything together, including your participation online, to get a mark for you. So don't ignore what you are supposed to do. Somebody says, is the research proposal the same as the long essay proposal? Not necessarily, you can choose to use it for it. But as in my the department, after accepting it, they may tell you to write another one. Your supervisor may tell you to write another one if he doesn't like the topic. What I'm trying to emphasize here concerning the examination is that we have not yet done any final decision. And we also have to know what will happen after the two weeks now. But I, we can foresee that we may go to the end of April with you online and maybe finish the semester with you online. But um, the examination, there will be, we are still in discussion on how it will come and how it will be done. But whatever it is, it will be in a, in a way that will be easier for the, lecture, the student to be able to participate. It can be a term paper that you are writing right now, you can convert that to exams. Or it could be that you can give it a take home and give you enough time to submit it. It can be like that. But we are not yet certain yet because we also don't know what will happen by 1st of May. I hope you understand me. Yes, Prof. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. I know that the students, a lot of you are confused because the university is not, uh, people are not telling you anything. But we are, we are also confused as you are. We are, we are, they ask us questions on our examinations, <laughs> the different methods we can use. And we have, we have shared it to senior management. They are discussing it. But I think everybody is waiting to see what will happen after the two weeks. Whether the, um, out of the 15,000 that the president said, whether there will be a major extension then it will be done. Don't think about examination dates now, because even the, to tell you the truth, they changed the date for the online um, lessons to start. The university said officially the online lessons should start on 13th April, because uh, they were still, some faculty were still now getting their, themselves ready. So, but we have taught about three times now. So by 13th April, we are, we are even ahead. That means that they will even extend the 15th of May, which was the end of the lectures, to the to about the end of May, that's if you are doing online lectures. So you can just imagine what will happen. But whatever it is, we do, we don't foresee the cancellation of the semester. You are going to get some level of assessment, and the semester will close so that you can those who have to graduate can can um, can complete the semester peacefully. That one has to be done. Okay. Nobody that's very important. Nobody during the semester, so don't defer the exam. In case an exam comes and it is take home exam or um, they, they convert your assignments to exam, just do it and finish it and then move on. There's no need for you to come back and write a semester like this again. And you should know that in this case, if you're writing exam, there may be a lot of consideration for the university side. I was told that in one of the universities in the US, one of my friends was telling me that they, as a faculty, I've told them to give the students pass or fail, not a mark, pass or fail. So that is very straightforward. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know what will happen here, but <laughs> you, you can imagine. So, yes. pass or fail. you just have to do your minimum to get your pass. <laughs> but it will be okay. It will be okay. Some of us sure, are fine. Sure, we mm, trust you. Okay. Hey, <laughs> trust God. <though. laughs> anyway, thank you very much. We should pass. Thank you. As for the research methods, we don't, or in that and I have this kind, we don't intend to fail anybody, but just do your assignments and do what we tell you to do. We can't fail anybody. We don't plan to, and we can't. <laughs> so, but if you, a person wants to fail, then the person who decided, I won't do anything, I won't log online, I won't do any of the assignments, I won't attempt them, I won't submit anything, then we don't have any evidence to show that you even attempted doing something. And remember, nobody's preventing you from discussing with your friends in concerning the assignment, but you have to submit your own work. But you have your discussions that you are doing with your friends and other 
and seniors and juniors and stuff. Nobody's preventing you from doing that. Okay. But it's good that every lecturer you meet, you have an engagement with the lecturer to know his position about some of these issues. So that the lecturer doesn't um, surprise you with something that you didn't expect. Sure, sure. That is what we've been doing from yesterday. <laughs> Good question. Okay, then. Thank you. Have a, have a great day. May God be with you. May he give you a peaceful sleep and give you understanding of what you are doing. Some of you are, it's not an easy time, but Amen. The stress you are going through, I pray that there will be peace in your home. And that you are better than, than ever. Don't, don't fret about exams. Just relax and do what I'm doing right now. I will take care of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. God bless you, dog. One time, welcome. One time, sir. Good night. Thank you, dog. Are you welcome? Call it view. Come on, do my view.